somewhere around the first of the year, we were made aware of a of a new cartridge dreamed up by an engineer at Winchester called the 6.8 Westerner. Well, this design aspect has already created problems. This cartridge was derived from a 270 Winchester short magnum case. This is information that's been in print. However, it doesn't specifically state what the difference is, other than the case is a little shorter. To allow higher blitzes coefficient bullets to be seated to where they'll function through one of these short actions. Well, this engineer at Winchester got off entirely on the wrong track here. I happened to be visiting a week ago with an individual that I've known for over 38 years. And he had an individual get a hold of him and tell him that he had a new rifle that his ammunition wouldn't go in. Well, the guy happened to bring this rifle over to him. Now, this fellow is fairly gun savvy, does his own hand loading. is a lifelong hunter. He brought the rifle over to him and he had a brand new, a brand new Browning rifle chambered in 6.8 Westerner. So he thought, so he thought. Anyway, this rifle happened to be chambered in 270 Winchester Short Magnum. The person at Bass Pro told him it was the same as the 6.8 Westerner. Now you're starting to get the drift. It was derived at off of the 270 Winchester short mag. The, inter the ammunition is interchangeable, so the guy told him at Bass Pro. Well, it's not interchangeable. The guy put a round of ammunition in the chamber and he had it stuck in the chamber. Now exactly why it was stuck in the chamber, I'm not really certain. I didn't handle this gun. I'm getting this from the fellow that he brought it to. Well, the fellow took the jag off of his cleaning rod and he just gently dropped that rod down and the cartridge fell out of the fell out of the chamber. What he had was a 270 Winchester short mag and he had 6.8 Western ammunition. Now, I'm going to explain another aspect of this. Just the week before this, coming from the same Bass Pro Shop where that fellow bought that rifle, a man got a hold of him, and he bought a 6.8 Westerner rifle and I believe that rifle was a Christensen Arms rifle. Sold a Bass Pro. And he had five boxes of ammunition. He had five boxes of ammunition and it says Winchester on the box and the cartridge designation on the box is 270 Winchester short mag. And the individual that was buying the gun questioned the guy at the gun counter, oh, it's the same it's the same cartridge, it's the same ammunition, it's no problem. Well he bought a hundred rounds. He bought five boxes of 270 Winchester short mag ammunition, and the rifle that the man sold him at the gun counter was 6.8 Westerner. So what I'm describing, we've got two situations here. One rifle chambered for one cartridge, which wasn't the ammunition that he had. 
and another rifle chambered for another cartridge, which wasn't the ammunition that he had there either. Now, I'm glad I'm not the engineer at Winchester that dreamed up this, this, this idea. This is where the problem's created, right here. On top of that, we have individuals that are writing in, not in, in highly distributed magazine publications that really don't understand what they're talking about and have confused people. Somehow or another, this guy at the Bass Pro, it wasn't just one guy, it was several different guys at Bass Pro that, that peddled these rifles to these people in this ammunition, but it was all wrong. So I'm pointing this out because if it happened there, where else is it going to happen? Here's the other aspect. I see this as a highly dangerous and a volatile situation. <laughs> Let's say you got a 270 Winchester short mag. And you've been advised by the same uninformed individual or individuals that sold you 6.8 Westerner ammunition for that rifle. Now, if you put a round of that ammunition in the rifle, it actually fits into the rifle, and you fire it, and that case has been shortened on that cartridge compared to the 270 Winchester short mag. This in itself tells me that the distance from the head to the shoulder of the case is different, so it's different head space. So you've got a tremendous amount of head space. In a, this existing situation and lo and behold the extractor itself holds the case back in the chamber and the firing pin hits the primer and blows the gun up now this is the next thing to happen folks because if you don't know by now what excessive headspace does you'll sure as hell know when the gun blows up and I would hate to be that engineer. I would hate to be Winchester under these situations. It isn't anything we'd want to be involved with, any of us in the, in the gun field. But this is what's happening. I'm bringing this out. Yes, it's two isolated cases here. But the fact of the matter is both of them happened. It's not a hundred situations. It's two situations. But this can happen somewhere else, and what I just descri described to you can happen if that extractor holds that case back and allows that primer to be ignited and the rifle's fired. It's going it, to, no doubt, it's going to blow the gun up. And what's going to happen to this individual? It's going to depend on a lot of situations. But we've got a tremendous situation here for a very, very serious, unfortunate situation that could lead to a tremendous lawsuit. Could be a big, big thing. People have gotten so far off track here swallowing this idea of ballistics coefficient. Ballistics coefficient is a thought up number. Thought up over a certain profile of a bullet at a certain velocity, a certain altitude, certain atmospheric, barometric pressure, so on and so forth. Well, this is what's created this situation. An engineer at Winchester that's obviously very inexperienced, come up with this bright idea. And so much for the bright idea. And I certainly wouldn't want to be you, sir, that came up with this cartridge design.